My name is Emma Weston and I'm the CEO and co-founder at AgriDigital. We're an Australian-based ag tech company that's bringing trust and transparency to our global agri supply chains. And we're doing that through a digital commodity management platform and blockchain solutions that connect pharma through to consumer. Now, I'm not so much here to talk about us today, um, but I want to take you through a bit of a journey of some of the key technologies that are changing the way our global agri supply chains operate, the way in which we interact with our food and our fiber, and to suggest to you that we may just have the best chance yet of transforming supply chain to value chain, and that the way that we're going to do that is through trust. Just make sure we've got that working. Okay. So, a couple of um, key themes that are going to pepper this talk that just to keep in mind, I'm not running through this as a really tight agenda, but I do want to kind of think about trust in a broader context, and that's going to become pretty, um, pretty obvious as I, as I run through this presentation. So, oftentimes as an industry, we, um, we use the term trust and we mean trust that's actually earned by virtue of relationships or by brand equity. So trust is an exclusive concept. It's the fact that I trust my local beef producer because I've known him or her for a long time or the stall holders at my farmer's market because I've invested in a, a personal relationship. Um, but I don't trust big brand X, for example, who's remote and doesn't seem to actually connect to me um, or know or care about me. Trust has been seen as an intimate expression of the relationship between a supplier and a customer. And it's true, this is one version of trust. But what if trust is no longer exclusive? What if it's no longer personal? And what if it's no longer localized, but instead is inclusive, pervasive, and embedded? This technologically instituted or digital trust brings enormous opportunity, but not some insignificant challenge for us all. I want to quickly explore this new form of digital trust and the technologies that are converging to make it possible against the backdrop of the impact that it's having on incumbents, business models, and how we can use digital trust to move from supply chain to value chain. So Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods is a real and very recent example of incipient incumbent disruption. Supermarkets have traditionally regarded themselves as only really having competition at the margin and being really safe from in, in their business model because of it's a low margin um, operation. However, tech is very, very good at disrupting low margin operations. So this offers little or no sphere of protection for incumbents. HelloFresh is another example some of you may know. Um, it's a, a, a service, a SaaS service, so software as a service, that um, is really marketed to consumers, so it's a B2C product that allows us to procure and deliver um, fresh meal kits ready to cook to our homes. And in doing this, consumers are bypassing shopping altogether in favor of convenience, simplicity, and personalization. So let's go through a little bit of a potted tour of some of these technologies that I think are, under, are, are really underpinning the way that trust is going to form in the future. So at its core, there's digitization. Digital trust has been enabled via the convergence of technologies that are largely cloud-based or dependent, and the digitization of data, workflows, communication, and finance is providing the bedrock for the enablement of so many other technologies. Digitization means that anyone, anywhere, anytime is able to access the information they need to run their business and to make informed purchasing decisions. It can be done literally in the field, and importantly, it's available in real time. IoT, so smart di devices, sensors, and other devices like drones that provide us information about state, location, and quality of our physical environment, our workplace, and our goods. Our supply chains are quickly becoming webbed with connected devices, and this will be one of the primary ways that we interact with the world around us, and that we keep parity between the physical and the digital worlds and maintain integrity in our data sets. Artificial intelligence. So the use of robotics and swarm technologies in production agriculture is already incipient, and there's broader forms of AI that are well underway across the supply chain. And AI is proving to be more reliable and accurate in many cases than human intelligence and labor, whether that's a chess game or it's the identification and eradication of a weed species. Augmented and virtual reality. 
I was interested that Ian brought this up. We've got some similar views on this, I think. AR and VR is not just for gamers, right, Ian? Um, so we're really seeing that there is now an ability to engage in an augmented or virtual version of the real world that creates empathy and engagement. And so AR and VR is being used right here, right now, by consumers to make more informed and contextualized purchasing decisions, as well as earlier in the chain for things like crop management, monitoring, and as a diagnostic tool for livestock care. Deep analytics. This is algorithmically driven, descriptive, prescriptive, and predictive analytics. And it's transforming our big data sets to actionable insights. So this is coming out of traditional ERP systems, absolutely. But the bigger transformation that's taking place and that's underpinning the trust factor and the transformation of trust is actually going to come from distributed data sets. And that's what's giving us deep insight across whole of chain performance, not just company performance. So this is the big transformation that's coming through. And I guess that brings us on to the B word, which is blockchain. So behind me, you can see a little bit of video playing. Um, I know that for many of you, blockchain feels um, somewhat remote. I'll just recap on what it is very briefly. It's a, a new form of ledger or a data store that is cryptographically secured in a way that creates a tamper-proof record or a mutable record that underpins the digital trust model. So I know that this still seems very wordy. Um, what was happening behind me just on the screen was a little video shot from a pilot that we recently did with CBH in the West. And what you actually saw was a payment taking place on a blockchain, and the blockchain is actually that, uh, the, the black box there, which is a little bit probably difficult to read um, for, for you all, but that is a representation of data being posted to a blockchain. And if you'd been watching closely, it is a little bit blink and you miss it. Um, you would have seen a couple of long lines appear down the bottom of, um, of that code set. So the the fact that we can use blockchain to do a uh, real-time exchange um, of, of both currency as well as assets is quite transformative. The fact that we have an immutable tamper-proof record is really going to underpin a lot of the uh, conscientious consumer and other supply chain assurance behavior that is, um, I think, going to be something we'll talk about going forward. So technology is rapidly changing and transforming our supply chains. And today's linear chains, as I've represented them there, are rapidly becoming digitized, modular, and mobile. And tomorrow's supply chains have the potential to become trust webs. Um, whether or not we place the consumer at that center, I actually do, do agree with that model. But in any case, they are interactive. And there are no more linear forms of communication, transactionality, and information in the way that we conceive of the traditional supply chain. Where we, the new form of supply chain is really a network where trade, finance, and data flows are all contained within a single source. They're not siloed anymore. And so this enables us to leverage those flows across the network to the value of all participants. Now, digital trust is actually at the heart of this because it is inclusive, it is pervasive, and it is embedded. And it's actually even programmable. Um, I'll leave that one out there. We might want to talk about that later. Um, it's also interactive and empowering for the participants who decide to embrace it. So I'm just going to leave you with this, this image here. Some of you may recognize and know what you're looking at. Um, if you don't, it's an image not of the supermarket of the future, but of a vertically integrated supply chain that is representing itself to consumers in the form of Alibaba's HEMA. So this is, um, for want of a better word, I'll still call it a HEMA supermarket in Beijing. Um, in China, it's in operation now. And this is where shoppers are able to interact directly with their food, socialize their food purchases and choices, and they're making payments digitally, and they have a multi-level assurance program embedded into their shopping experience. So HEMA is not a supermarket. It is, in fact, a trust experience. Thank you. <laughs>